Hello, for the upper extremity portion, we are going to be measuring elbow flexion. In order to measure elbow flexion, we need the subject to be laying down comfortably supine with the shoulders neutral to the side with the forearm supinated. We are going to be using a goniometer to measure the range of motion. The axis of the goniometer is going to be on the lateral epicondyle of the humerus. The stationary arm is going to be the center of the humerus pointed and centered towards the acromion process. The moving arm is going to follow the styloid process of the radius as she flexes. Go ahead and flex. We are measuring at 40 degrees. We started at 180 degrees. This means that her range of motion is 140 degrees for elbow flexion, which is standard measurement. For the lower extremity motion, we are going to be doing knee flexion. In order to measure knee flexion, we're gonna have the subject lay in supine position. We're gonna allow the hip to flex in order to measure the knee flex. I'm going to have her arms at her stomach so I can measure the movement. With this goniometer, I'm going to place the axis of the goniometer on the lateral epicondyle of the femur, which is right here. The stationary arm is going to be pointed towards the greater trochanter. The moving arm is going to follow the lateral malleolus as she flexes. We are going to start at 180 degrees and I'm going to follow her as she does the range of motion. Go ahead and flex for me. We are at 50 degrees here. We started at 180 degrees, which means that her range of motion is 130 degrees. For the cervical motion, we are going to be doing cervical lateral flexion. In order to measure this movement, we are going to have the subject sit down with lumbar support. Because we are on the ground, I'm going to have her have her legs crossed with their arms to her knees to provide support. Put your arms to your knees. Back straight. The lumbar and the thoracic are now stable. I'm going to use this goniometer and I'm going to put the axis on the C7 of the cervical. Right. The stationary arm is going to be aligned with the spinous process of the thoracic spine. The moving arm is going to be on the posterior midline of the occipital protuberance of the head. She's gonna start at 180 degrees and I'm going to ask her to laterally flex her head to the right. Go ahead and flex. Let the motion go. We started at 180 degrees and now it's at 160, which means that her lateral flex of the cervical spine is at 20 degrees.
For the trunk range of motion, we are going to be measuring trunk flexion. In order to measure this range of motion, we are going to need a measuring tape. We're going to have the measuring tape start at S1, which is down here, and we're going to first measure it all the way to T7. This is at 17 inches. I am now going to have her stabilize her feet and reach forward and flex her hip and trunk. She's going to bend forward, reaching towards the ground. Go ahead and bend. This will elongate her spine and provide a new measurement. She started at 17 and now is on 23. That is an extra six inches for trunk flexion. And that concludes the measurements for knee flexion, cervical lateral flexion, trunk flexion, and elbow flexion. Thank you and have a nice day.